guys, I'm Tim from Game Twaddle, and today we're here to talk about Letters from Whitechapel. And with me is James Moray. And this is one of our favorite hidden movement games. I, not to speak for you, right? Mm -hmm. But I, we've talked about it, I think, a little bit and played it together. It plays two to six players. You can really play it with two people, I think, pretty easily. But yeah, so this is Jack the Ripper, your, your investigators trying to track, track down Jack the Ripper through the Whitechapel District of London, and it is intense. Do you have any thoughts regarding that? I think it's, it does play well with two. I would say best with four to six because there are many different investigators that people can handle, and it works really well with a big kind of group dynamic, people talking over where should we go, where is he. It kind of adds to the feeling of you're actually looking for and investigating uh, these murders. So it's very thematic when you get a big group. And it gets like really, yeah, really tense, really intense. right? Right? Okay, and it, because basically Jack kills someone, one of these white pawns, more or less, and then we mark it here, and then all the investigators kind of scramble, and then as Jack has a limited amount of turns to get back to his hideout, which is one of the numbered spaces, right, mm -hmm. on the map. And so we're trying to, as investigators, assuming he's the killer, we're trying to anticipate where he's going. We're, we're investigating and like trying to pick up clues and mark his trail. So we've got these yellow little highlighter discs that we put over the numbers. So we're like, oh, we know he was here and we went, he went through here. And it's, yeah, and especially as it starts to get towards the end of the turn timer or the round marker, you're really sweating, right? Mm -hmm. Like to, to catch him. And they will close in on you. And it's all about, can you figure out a path to get away from the investigators? And the investigators are worried about, like, is he where he, we think he is? Right. Uh, right. Are we going to get him this turn? Because Jack has some cheats, right? He's got like the carriage token, which lets him move two spaces. He's got the alley token. So these are all blocks, which I don't know how well you can see, but he could essentially just jump from one side of a block to another side, and it can be really problematic if it's some of these blocks are huge and he's got like so many different places to go. And uh, they really get you because basically as an investigator, you can do one of two things after you move. You can investigate and maybe he is on that spot, or you can just say, I'm going to capture. If you capture and he's not there, you get nothing. If you investigate and he's there, all you know is that he is or was there at some point in time. So you really, it's really tough because you it, like to know when to pull the trigger. Because I'm sure there have been times where we have investigated a spot and Jack the Ripper is just standing there going, oh, please, like, don't look. So we're going to uh, break down the game through a couple of categories. We'll rate them one to five. So the first one we like to do is accessibility. So how accessible is this? How hard is it to find in the wild if you're just to walk into a game store? How easy is it to teach? You know, complexity, the weight of the game. So where do you come down with that? I would say this hits high marks for all of those categories because you can find it pretty much anywhere. Okay. Uh, any friendly local game store has copies of either this or the smaller, faster version of Whitehall Mystery. And to teach it, it really depends on the crowd you're teaching it to, but if they're familiar with board games, you can teach all the rules right up front and have a, have a great gaming experience. If it's new people, you can hold some of those intricacies back and just say, we're looking for a murderer. You get to move a, a space or two every turn, go, go look for him. Cool. And, and it's a great way to just bring people in. So I've had this out with groups of really dedicated hobby gamers right and family members who haven't played monopoly so you play games. this with like yep. casual gamers mm -hmm. and you use and it went well i've i've never been that bold because i've always been a little intimidated because this is to me like a slightly more complex out of the hidden movement and i think some of it is just with the some of the moving pieces at the beginning where the potential victims can wander. Mm -hmm. um, Jack can wait a little bit, you know what I yeah. mean, to to see where the investigators are, you know, and try to figure yeah. out things. But I guess that's some of the stuff you said you can kind of like walk back, right, and, and slowly. Those things, it's good to have 
somebody who knows how to run the game. Sure. And then they can explain, all right, now you have to make the decision. Do you want your, your people to try to run away towards the investigators who run this way? And they, they pick one of those options, and then you move on. You just go, yeah, well, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, I think for an older game, because this is what, like 2011, I think this game came out. It isn't too hard to find. I think as far as accessibility goes, I give it about a four out of five. Just because, and that was my own personal misgivings about being mm -hmm. being nervous to teach it to people. Like this wouldn't be the first hidden movement game that I would teach somebody. But now hearing you talk about it, I could be convinced otherwise. But so, how about components? Where do components come down for you with a game that's this? Well, in my opinion, seemingly simple. Uh, I mean, you have the the pawn tokens, you have the little transparent discs that mark movement, and a couple player turn order indicators. There isn't too much to judge here, but I will say all of the components do add to that theme I was talking about. Each of them adds to this this feeling of we are investigators, we're on the hunt, and it works really well with all the gameplay choices you have to make there is a synergy right yeah like everything makes sense there's nothing definitely nothing overproduced you know for a fantasy flight game at least this edition mm -hmm. it's almost tame yeah you know you definitely. feel like you, you feel like these should all be miniatures instead of you know just wooden pawns the discs i mean it, so me i love the map and i love the even though they're pretty much Arbitrary. I love the historical facts about the the figure, you know, the characters, the all, investigators. They're all actual people who were in the investigations. They right. The information for where the crimes actually occurred. But yeah, they took they took great pains to to really do like keep it very thematic and probably fairly accurate. Uh, but for me, like table presence wise, if you're walking by and you see this, it's like well, okay, like I don't know what that is. So. I rate it a little lower on components, but that is only because uh, there's nothing that like really grabs me yeah. as I see it. But the big but, right, is that it's all very functional. Mm -hmm. Everything all makes sense. There's nothing excessive. I, th I think it's a very clean design while yes. still having the theme. Yes, that helps it definitely, out. definitely. And so now gameplay. So we're on like a, yeah, where does this come down to you on gameplay? Again, one of my one of my favorite games to bring out. I I really like it. All the choices are very captivating. Player interaction is fantastic. It's I would say the the one part of the gameplay that can get a little stale is if you have that group of four or five or six players. Sometimes making decisions grinds to a halt. Sure, sure. Or you can have an alpha kind of making everyone's decisions, right? And that's Sort of a, can be sort of a downer sometimes, but you can you can mitigate against that, you know. And like, I tend to try to stop people from doing that in games that I play, just because I'm kind of sensitive to that. Like, hey, like, let them decide. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can point out some good choices to make, but but yeah. And the other thing that we started doing was implementing like a timer that on the turns good. Yeah, to make. Definitely decisions just to keep the game moving because this game does not have to take hours and hours and hours but but it can it can if you let it and i think that you can control that but you know i mean there's people that will sit and analyze and analyze and analyze and you can till your brains are coming out of your ears but for me gameplay is a five i mean this the tension in this as you're as you're chasing him down and then like halfway through sometimes you're like no we got to stop chasing him we've got to get in front of him you know because if you're chasing him you're always behind and you're never going to catch him because odds are he is going to get back to his hideout and then you know as they as the nights progress and it gets you you feel like you you might be figuring out where Jack's hideout is and where he's going mm -hmm. but sometimes i mean we had a guy one time his hideout was like down here but he spent like half the time running around up here and we're just, I mean, and we, you know, so we thought he was up here. He's actually down here, you know, and so it messed us all up. And it, that might have been you. I don't remember. But yeah, so for me, gameplay is like top notch. But you, we have to have timers. We kind of have to 
if we know someone is sort of that quarterback gamer, you know, and wants to call everybody's moves. Oh, you're going to go there? Uh, okay, but these are better options. <laughs> yeah, that'll happen. Right, and, you know, so I try to tamp some of that down in my own game groups, but for the most part, I think everybody that I've played this with has had a really good time. Absolutely. Yeah, um, I, I haven't had somebody say that they just didn't like it. Right, yeah, me neither. Me neither. So how about the price or the value of this game as far as, like, MSRP? If you were to go out and find it, on the shelf at the store is it worth it to you it depends on what kind of experience you're looking for sure because i know a lot of people who would see that you know the sparse kind of components we have right and say i have to pay that much for it and it's not i wouldn't say it's overpriced but it you're buying the you know experience right that we yes were just describing and it's i think it's worth that see now i agree and i agree and also agree because i feel like the if your group will play this game with you, you're going to get to play this game so much mm -hmm. because this will be the hidden movement game that people are going to go to and want to play with you. In, in my experience, I don't, uh, I've got several hidden movement games. I love them. This is one of the more popular ones. I love it. I love the theme. I know it's grim and kind of dark. But the everybody gets excited. Everybody's standing up pouring over the map by the end of the game. I mean, there's nobody sitting down. Even Jack is, like, sweating a little bit and getting nervous. Because if he's calm, then you know you're going the wrong direction. But, yeah. but yeah, so so if you see this on a shelf, I, and, and you think you're going to like either the theme, because I was drawn to the Jack the Ripper theme before it was even a hidden movement. Like, before I realized that it was hidden mm -hmm. movement. And then, oh, I like hidden movement. You know, so for me, like, this was a no-brainer, and I've definitely gotten my money's worth out of my copy. So, interaction. Who, is, who does this game appeal to? Who is this for? We talked a little bit about that. What's some of the player interaction, like, all in general? How does that sum up for you? Well, it's a one versus all, so if you have that personality in the game group who they like to kind of look at things from the outside or play play the mastermind. Sure. They, they will absolutely love playing as Jack, trying to escape from their friends, listening to their friends talk about where they could be. Yes. So that's like yes. a lot of fun. And the deliberation between, you know, deciding as a group, should we go this way? I really think he's over here. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, you get a lot of good conversation and just a, just a lot of fun. And then there's always like that post game breakdown, right? Yeah. This is this, this is the way I actually went. This is the game. This is the game where afterwards you are like, okay, so where were you? Yes. Where did you go? We've got to talk about this. And you probably spend, I mean, we probably spent 20 minutes after a game talking about just who went where and I was gonna, but I mm -hmm. didn't, you know. And so, yeah, this rate's very high for me. I give it a four only because I do feel like some people might be turned off by the blasé nature of some of the components. And I, for me, that doesn't matter. A good game is a good game. Mm -hmm. the, the art isn't, like, amazing. I love the map. Like, I love the way the map looks because I feel like it looks like a real map. Mm -hmm. I do love, like, the photographs of the real investigators. But I can see where other people might not and, and not be as appealing. So just as a general rating, it's a four out of five. But that's not even a real knock on it because some people don't care about that. I don't really care. I do love good artwork in a game, but it's not a deal breaker for me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's a solid game for everything you get. It all makes sense. For me, overall, at the end of the day, this is a 5 out of 5 game for me. Like, I never turned down an opportunity to play it. For me, too. It is just top-notch, one of the best hidden movement games. The theme, like, if you like theme, because some games just have a theme, like, slapped on. This game's theme, you are, like, knee-deep mm -hmm. in it. And it all makes sense. And it is all really well intermixed with the gameplay. So that's that's it for me. Do you have any other final thoughts? I would agree. I would say it's a 5 out of 5 for me. I mean, I have a game group. We play a lot of new games very regularly. It's...
a little bit cult of the new actually we we're just sure. trying to get that new game to the table but the first time we played this we played it again the next week nice. and again the next week nice so it really has staying power replayability and like i said just draws kind of everybody in so it's five yeah out of five it, for me. it is a classic it is a really i think it is is a classic game and uh if you if you add it to your collection i think it'll stay in your collection because you're going to keep getting it played right definitely all right, well, thanks from Game Twaddle. I've been Tim. I'm James. Have a great day. If you like what you saw, if you want to see us make more content like this, please hit that thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe. Give us a share on social media. Remember to bring that little bell. It really helps. Be sure to check out our unboxing videos. Don't forget we have reviews. And also the new show. Thanks for watching the Board Game Rundown.